Are you in? Are you out? It's all good. It's all good. Let's get my right notes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Me being here isn't normal. It must be things are changing. <laughs> are you in? Are you out? <laughs> it's all good. Because God's good. Come on, Jack's not here, but I got to get some of that. God's good. Because all the time. All right, good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Doors of opportunity are opening up. We see doors. <laughs> it's not by accident. For me, this was a prophetic message to the body. Um, the Lord gave me a vision months ago that I didn't know was going to be applied now. But uh, that's how God works. He goes before. And if we aren't paying attention, sometimes we might miss out. But he has a way of bringing us into those doors of opportunity, even when we weren't paying, the first, paying attention the first time. And I thought it was really interesting that 20 years old, uh, gone and come back, was mentioned a couple of times because some of these doors represent revisiting some places that were uh, long ago. So if you will, let's bow in prayer. Father God, there are doors of opportunity that we're going to talk about today that are going to strike a chord with many of us, Lord, because you've been talking to us about these places already. Lord, doors of opportunity to exercise our faith that you've been building and growing and you've been investing in, in us. So Lord, I pray for the infilling of the Holy Spirit to stir the waters once again to fill us and flood us and spark a flame again, Father God. Revive, Father God. Renew, Father God. Restore, Father God. But fill us up with more of you, Father God, we pray today in Jesus' name. So this message, I really felt like the Lord said, is for leaders, those who are willing to be led and to lead also, because there's a reciprocal thing about doors. You go indoors and you go outdoors. They're on a hinge. Kind of funny that way. But there, it's, this message is to leaders who will, are willing to be led. And it's for priests who represent serving and being served. Because our high priest serves us so that we may serve others. Amen? So there's an in and out going on also. And it's for prophets who have a voice to speak up when others don't have a voice. It's for the usefulness of having a word in due season when in the, there's somebody in an hour of need that needs a good word. And there's so many implications to this in and out uh, opportunity that's before us to exercise our faith. What do we believe? What will we step out in? What are we willing to go for? Because I heard this thing the other day, and it just got me. And it said, people, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much room. <laughs> and I thought, wait a minute, let me think about this. And is it, am I living on the edge? Well, the very next day, we got behind a dump truck that's big, large, and heavy. And it was driving down the middle of the road. We're on Wards Ferry Road, rural road. And it's windy, you know, how our roads are. And uh, so we're behind this, and it's, I'm thinking about this thing, living in the middle of the road or living on the edge. And here's this big, lunky thing that's not nimble in speed and very uh, uh, obstructive. And we're behind him. And sure enough, around the corner coming at him was another car. But thank goodness it was somebody living on the edge. Because they were able to avoid this big clunky thing in the middle. And sometimes I feel like the Lord has a word here for us that we are in the middle of things we shouldn't be in the middle of. We need to make a decision. One side or the other side. Are we in or are we out? Because sometimes it's good to be out. Sometimes it's good to be in and we're in seasons. Right now we're in the season of fall. The leaves fall, but the righteous stand. There's a consistency in that that God wants us to grab a hold of. 
uh, the deer are falling because the hunters need to eat. There's a deer season right now that we expect in the fall season. There's th certain things that we expect in certain seasons. We expect the hunting to uh, open up for us. There's an opportunity that's not available throughout the year. It's at a certain season. And so we go after the deer and we provide for our family and we go out and get what we need, but we also have the opportunity to give out of our abundance. And so there's a lot of opportunities that I'm going to be talking about that have multiple applications. And as I share the vision that the Lord gave me that I'm going to break it down, it's going to start speaking to each person a different message because we're all in different places. And in fact, when I shared the vision the first time, uh, I shared with a few people and every one of them had a different interpretation because of where they were at. And it's different for all of us. And that's how the prophetic is. You might be saying a message that you intend to go one way with the person, but they're receiving it in another, another place because of what God's doing in their life. So it's funny how things work. We don't know the outcome. We don't know uh, all of what to expect. And I counted up. There's 16 doors in the sanctuary. Some of them we know what to expect if we go through them because we've been through them before. But there's always an element of the unexpected. When we come home from work and we go through that door, that's our home, we know what to expect, but there's always an element of uh, the unexpected. So there's always something that God has in store that we haven't planned on that could happen. And we need to be people of faith to believe no matter what, it's going to be good. Amen? Amen. So, doors going out or being out aren't necessarily excluding anybody or keeping you out away from something. At times they are uh, uh, to pr pr keep us from moving too soon into something, but it's not to be left out completely all the time. And I'm going to explain that in a minute, but I have a story about something that happened just the other day. My, uh, Carl and I went out to lunch. We uh, had just sat down, uh, and our uh, niece and nephew came in the door. We haven't seen them in a long time, so we flagged them over and said, come sit with us. And so we started getting reacquainted again about kids and grandkids and all of that, and uh, started listening in on their story about their oldest son who went off to college. And uh, last year was his first year. And he went through five different majors trying to figure out what to do with his life because he was going to go all in, right? And, yet, and he didn't want to make the wrong choice. And so they give you tests. He has a, a class advisor. They used to be called counselors. Now they're advisors. It's all good. But he uh, went to the advisor who gave him personality tests, character tests. What are you interested? What are you not interested? What, what would spark you up? Because, you know, you want to get invest yourself into something you're going to be passionate about for a really long time. And so you're going to be spending the next three or four years or whatever in your studies and preparation, investing yourself into something, you want it to be something you can be passionate about, and so they do these tests. And he came to a, a, a point where he decided, I want to be a math teacher to junior high and high school students. Awesome. We need those. We need them. So he got in, got all the books, got going in it. Somehow there was a personality clash that he wasn't willing to per keep going and per break through and overcome or, or take up the challenge, whatever way you want to put it, he decided, it ain't going to work for me. So he went back to the advisor, and he uh, started going through the list that they gave you of choices. Now, every one of those choices would have fit him. They narrowed it, it narrowed it down according to his personality, his character, his ability, whatever he's interested in. So any one of those things he would have excelled in, pick one. So he decided, well, you know, I think I'm going to pursue music. So he went after the music and got into the middle of that and found out because he had been in uh, music in high school, did trumpet and, and guitar and bass. And so he got into the middle of music and found out that 
he's going to have to learn music theory. And if you're going to learn music theory, you got to have piano lessons. And he didn't play the piano. So in order to do this whole thing that he has a desire and a passion he knew he'd love to do, he's going to have to back way up. He was going to have to take piano lessons before he can do this class. He wasn't willing to do that. <laughs> it was going to take uh, quite a long time and investment of his time to go there, and he wasn't. He was chomping at the bit. Uh, there's got to be something. So he went into his class advisor, and he showed him the list again, and they were narrowing it down, okay, checking off some of the things he already pursued and bought books for, and I'm, uh, he already made some kind of investment in. So his parents are getting a little worried about all this anyways because they're hoping he'll make up his mind. But he decided, let's go after psychology. I like working with people, having a, a, a desire to serve people and see them succeed and help them out. And so he got all the books and he got into psychology and realized, I don't think I can handle the culture here. <laughs> so again, and he went through two more subjects. And he went through the whole year, and guess what? He and that class advisor became really good buddies. <laughs> he spent the entire summer with those guys, and they really got to know him. And uh, they, but, you know, the whole time they spent together, they were asking questions and talking about all of this stuff that he was the one who alone could decide. But yet, so he went through the whole summer stewing and, and talking and, and being advised. And when he finally came to this year, guess what he went for? The first, yeah, I was thinking that too. His very first choice to be a math teacher to junior high and high school students. Because there's something in him when he made that choice, it was right. And here we, get, we, we second guess ourselves or we don't want to uh, do the hard thing or whatever it is. But some, there's something about realizing that we need to overcome obstacles and they're always going to be there in one form or another. But there's something that's drawn us to do what God's called us to do. We've got to pay attention to because there's doors of opportunity for us and they're right for us to walk through because God places us in times of situations like me being here today I'm not a skilled speaker I've done some of this but I'm not a, a teacher I'm not going to give you theology or doctrine I have a prophetic word and it's a time in a time of season that is uh, God has brought it to and I get to go for go before the work that the Lord's going to bring up behind in you. You get to carry it out. So I'm a messenger of sorts, and I'm nervous about this and being up here up front. In fact, it was funny because I, when I was asked to do this, I had a calm. And, uh, uh, in fact, the words came out of my mouth, yeah, I will do that, before I realized what I was saying and answering. And yet times are changing. Are we going to step up? And something came out of me because it's something I should be doing and I need to get more skillful at it and I won't get skillful at it unless I do it. So there's a, a, a give and a take in our opportunities. What are we going to do? Are we teachable? Are we willing? Will we step out? Do we have faith that God is good all the time? Well, I had a vision many months ago and it's a simple one-line sentence. I saw a vision of doors stacked up against a bank along a hillside. And as I wrote it down, it was if, as if a light bulb came on and I realized I could take each one of those words and, and break this down with, to bring a fullness to what God's saying here. In this thing that... Uh, was brought to me a long time ago, and I let it go. I set it down, and then he brought it full circle for the season to be presented. I, in this wording of this one sentence, is a personal thing. It is I am, because, and you are, because of who I am. But it's a personal thing. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. Saw 
is a cutting tool. It's used to uh, shape things. So I saw a vision. A vision is something otherwise uh, than the ordinary sight. It's a vivid picture that can be imagined that one can uh, act on and employ the power of it. Having the unusual wisdom in it for foresight, what is about to happen. It is meant to activate and empower those who have eyes to see. And it is something that the Lord gave to me, and I was talking with our youth today, God uses them and gives them visions all the time. They don't know how to interpret it. So what I'm doing today by breaking this down is giving some, uh, a class and an exercise of how we can break down some of the things God's going to show you or has shown you, and you can do your homework because that's part of our, our job is to, to take things deeper in him if we're willing to make the investment. Amen? So the next word, door, represents a barrier by which there's an entry to close or open something. It's meant to be an access and a participation. We open the door to Jesus when he knocks, right? And we shut the door to the enemy when he wants in. Amen? So we have a participation part to that. And it, we are the ones who do, are to be doorkeepers of our hearts and have uh, 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 the determining factor who has access to our hearts. And uh, we also have a determining participation in our own activities from our heart. We get to choose what we're going to do. Doors give... Uh, um, and us an opportunity, and they actually, the word door means opportunity. So it's not by accident that he showed me doors. There was a, a, a deeper meaning. Doors going in and doors going out. Doors getting access and closures. And we get to choose uh, our, part to, our part in it. Because God doesn't uh, um, storm in the doors. He knocks. He's a gentleman. He wants your participation and faith. What's, what are you going to believe? Oh, when we're looking at the access to these doors, there's 16 doors in here. Some of these doors look like they don't go anywhere. And it takes an act of faith to believe what God's calling you into when you don't know what's behind that door. And so where he's, he's wanting us to... Uh, Think about this because there's doors that you've never been through before he's calling you to go through. And it's going to take your faith to believe God's leading you there. Something's going to stir you up because of your gift, whatever, that's putting you into that position. He wants you to be led by faith to believe. He's going to lead you into good things for the purpose and plan he's designed you for. Just like my nephew who has this uh, desire to serve and help others and he's honed it down to being a math teacher. It's going to open up many other accesses and doors. uh, As he's been with that advisor and counselor, he's actually been learning how to ask good questions. He's been. A, he's going to be able to ha- help your uh, high school and uh, uh, junior high students ask questions and answer questions in a different way and a deeper level because he spent time with someone who has taught him something that he probably doesn't even realize is going to be valuable now, but it's going to be of value later. So there's times and seasons for everything, and there's an investment in everything. The next word, stacked up. The word is stacked. It says it's piled, it's something that's piled up in a large quantity, something that has been stored up and accumulated. So there were all these doors, and there was all different types of doors stacked up for a purpose. Doors are a function. They're they're needed. They're uh, something that uh, is an opportunity that God's been stacking up, stacking up, stacking it up. 
we have uh, perhaps allowed opportunities to go by and they have stacked up and we missed out on them but something uh, can be done about that because those doors can be reopened or presented and you didn't miss out and that's a word for somebody today you didn't miss out you can still get in amen up it's a direction going in a higher position or level away from the center or middle and I thought okay he showed me something ahead of time before I even got to this study get out of the middle start living on the edge it's going in to an upright position as if you're getting out of bed it's waking up it's uh, developing a greater intensity as in speaking up or in going into a better place that is more advanced moving on up as in stirring up a fire you're moving into a place with the evidence of a greater knowledge as in as having found what was missing it's turned up as something that is brought into consideration as in a matter that is being brought back up so here we go we're revisiting some things and we didn't miss our opportunity that's the message today we didn't miss what we we're supposed to get because even with my nephew who kept knocking on doors and he came full circle the opportunity can come back to you full circle are you willing to go through the door that's a choice of participation that we need to revisit opening up up it includes a completion in its entirety also and a consuming of it all using it all up cleaning it all up and it represents laying up supplies running up the path going in a new direction that is not down it is tearing things up or pulling out all the stops and it is to go away it is a way to uh, measure success are things going up in your life are things improving in your life are things getting better in your life we need to examine these things God's calling us up to a newer level God's calling us into a new place of, of increase, of appointment, of fulfilling what he's called us to do. There's a stirring up in this season, and it is a season of change. We don't like to change. Uh, we just, Carl and I just moved after 30 years, and I know you guys have moved after a long time of being in one place, and it's a lot of work. And it's been awesome. It has been uh, so wonderful to be um, uh, moving and, and getting the, the stuff out, getting cleaned out. Uh, going through all old stuff and revisiting stuff because it has been a reawakening some passions in us uh, so there's a lot of good that comes with change but there's a lot of work that comes with change and we have to be willing to be uh, in that mode are we teachable are we willing are we willing to make the investment the next word is against it's in opposition to it's a direct opposition to it is facing opposition it's a defense from opposition as in throwing something against the wall you're up against it and it is as in touching something touching in a physical spiritual mentally uh, kind of like duking it out <laughs> going against something and if you don't have the ability to duke it out call your big brother I wish Jeff was here but you're going to have to call Jesus instead 
We've heard, that, we've heard the songs this morning. It was a prophetic ministry of worship this morning that prepared the way of the Spirit-led Christian of faith and the infilling of the Holy Spirit who makes us able to accomplish all things. And we're not in a battle that we need to uh, realize it's God's battle. And I came today, you know, I was like... In all the preparation, I have had a flood, a download. And it's like, I can't bring all this. This is so good. I don't want to miss out on any of it. I'm writing as fast as I could. I've got pages and pages. And I'm like, I'm going to cause their heads to explode. <laughs> and it's been wonderful for me. And I want you to have it all. And so I was praying about it and just going, I just need to let go of this thing and let God because he's going to be able to accomplish a lot more than I could. And he knows what you've already got going on. It's funny, too, because in that word, when I was looking it up, the very next word under the word against, which is that opposition and that battle and that whole thing, was the word agape. And it is... uh, the uh, unselfish, unconditional love for another, which is God towards us and us towards each other. And I thought that is uh, the thing that we want to focus on, not the battle. It is going deeper because it's not the filet of love that is just a camaraderie and association. It's the deep kind of love that God's calling us to go deeper and in our, the, the deeper level for our advancement. We're moving on up. So the next word after this is bank. I saw a vision of doors stacked up against a bank. And this is a very important part. Now it's de- described as a place where things are piled up. It's a curve that's in the road that's flared upward. There's that upward thing going on. And it's the place of transmission of funds as in deposits and withdrawals. Now we're getting exciting. It's a place of holding something in reserve, which includes blood. Blood bank. Some of us need a transfusion (laughs) to get renewed. And it's available. But what I really felt that this is talking about that word investment and God has invested something in each one of us. We've been with him a while. He's, he's made a deposit in you and I think it's time to collect on his end. Amen? And at the same time, we make an investment into the kingdom and it's time for us to get a withdrawal. And so it goes both ways. And the Lord gave me a word the other day, and he said, you know, that your success is somebody else's success, and somebody else's success is your success. And it's the same way with God. His success, what his son accomplished, was his success. Our success, because of what Jesus has done, has brought it full circle back to us. It is our success, but it is for another person's success as well. Did I see you say that right? I don't know if I say that right. Let's keep going. Success for you is success for somebody else. Somebody else's success for you, for themselves, is success for you. Hold that in mind. I'll try to straighten that out. The next word is along. I saw a vision of doors stacked up against a bank along a hillside. Along is that is uh, is that is a, that which is in line with the direction that things are going, and it's in, in it's the point in the in the journey as in stopping along the way. So you're going in a direction. And you stop along the way. For some of us, going in and out of the door means we were headed in one direction, and now we need to turn around and go into another direction, which is exactly how you define repentance. So when you are in a place of going in the direction of disobedience, 
and you need to turn around in order to go into obedience, you need to go in or out of what you're doing. And so sometimes in our change, we need to come to a place of repentance, which is simply changing your direction. It doesn't have to be a place of condemnation or weeping and gnashing of teeth and, and this horrible thing. God is, I think, stirring so, some things up here today to get us to go in a different direction than we've been going on because it's for our own advancement. We're going, we're going somewhere, and it's up. He's got something stacked up for us. He's prepared in advance. It's an opportunity. It's not a problem. Because it's what we do with it in our participation of, that comes through faith in him. Is he good? All the time, he is good. So the hillside, it's part of the hill between the summit and the foot. We live in the foothills. But we are headed to the hilltops. And it's something that we need to grab a hold of because we've been stuck in the middle we want to go up to the summit and get to the hilltop. We live in the foothills, and that doesn't define us. We are go going to the hilltop with God, and he's calling us to a higher level. Amen? Will your response be, yes, I am all you've made me. Yes, I can because of who you are. Yes, sir, I will. When I was asked to come up here and speak, I knew God had put something on my heart because he'd been stirring me up, putting these doors together, and I saw this vision, I'm, all this stuff going on, and this popped out of my mouth, yes, sir, I will. <laughs> and then, going through the whole process, today, coming here, I was not sure what I was going to say. I didn't know how it was going to come out. It was a level of faith for me to just live on the edge <laughs> and do it anyways and not rely on me because there's a gift of the Holy Spirit in me who can, through Christ, accomplish all things in me, in you. There's opportunities for us to employ our faith that are coming up, and it's not to uh, um, cause us to fear um, we can always rely on ourselves, but that's where fear is going to trip us up. I had such a peace about everything today. In fact, I had somebody come by, and it's like, you're looking pretty uh, calm for what is about to happen because they know that I'm not the normal speaker. And I'm like, God's got it. I don't have to think about this. It's going to happen because I've done my homework. I made the investment when I was supposed to. He's going to make the withdrawal now. Out of what he, I have got in me, he can use. No matter where you are at, what you've got in you, he can use it. There's a deposit, and it's time for withdrawal. Fullness <clears throat> is another word that the Lord ha, um, brought to me uh, in succession of, of preparation. And... The fullness is to be filled, complete, having in detail through a number that is through a duration, having a distinguishing characteristic. You know, from the time that God gave me the vision and has been doing something with me that I didn't realize was going on, but I was doing what I would do every day, and it was adding into that deposit of fullness in my character, in my pursuit of his character. And it's coming out in my effort to present to you or to whoever what they need. It's something that we don't take uh, account of what is in us. We have a huge potential that we don't tap into or we don't realize God sees it. He wants to apply it, and we step back. <laughs> so there's a, 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 a withdrawal that God's saying, if you want to, will you respond and say, I will? 
I'm talking about are you in or are you out? Because something's going on. You know, we've been in class after class after class in this church getting a huge deposit for us to take out. There's a sending out that's about to happen for the benefit of all our success. Of what we've gained in knowledge is the success of others who need that word in due season, who have the ability to serve as Christ serves, to bring hope again, to lead the way as an example of how a righteous life looks, walks, feels, talks, is, because we aren't fallen leaves, we are the upright who stand. So there's a fullness into coming, uh, it, there's a fullness in God that is to come into the highest state or degree to the utmost extent that is required to complete the amount. Fullness. Fullness is an action. It means being extreme, giving your all, and keep moving forward, facing things squarely face to face head on, living on the edge. So I'm going to say to you again, uh, a door is a barrier by which we gain entrance and we close and open. It's a means of access and participation. It's an opportunity. Are we going to go in? The door is presented to us and they're going to be all different. Or are we going to go out Go out at a time when we need to go out. You know, when you think about living in the middle and you're in or you're out, sometimes we're in the middle and we're taking up room that somebody else can't move forward in because we're in the way. So sometimes stepping out of the way is a good thing because somebody else needs to go forward. And it's not that you're going to miss out on something. It's because their success is your success. Amen? Because just because you stepped out of the way for a moment doesn't mean you get to go back in or not. It means that there is opportunity for that. And maybe it's not going to be here like it was before. Maybe it's going to be over here in a different way. Because you're going to advance. You're going to go to another level. And you're going to stretch your faith. And you're going to apply your faith. Because what God loves is when we get put into situations that we can't meet the need because it causes us to call upon him in faith, in new ways, and in new dimensions, new levels. And then it opens up a whole nother world of opportunity for him to show himself, to reveal his glory here on earth through you because you made a way because you're faithful in serving him. So there's all kinds of opportunities, all kinds of doors. I'm going to wrap this up. We have an opportunity to be doorkeepers. And that's a great place to be. It says in Psalms 84.10, For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere, and I'd rather be a doorkeeper in your house, in the house of my God, than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Being a doorkeeper might seem like a menial job, but it's something very important in God's economy. In fact, uh, he uh, called the priests, uh, or he called uh, them to account in that they fell away from their post. They were supposed to be guarding the door, and they didn't. And so he called them back to that position and said, there's things that are getting in that shouldn't get in, and there's things that need to get out because it's good for them to get out. So I want to remind us that the doorposts of our heart and the doorway and access that God's wanting to get to is multifaceted. Our God is multifaceted, and we can do much more than we think we can do because of Him. He makes us able to uh, uh, apply the many opportunities before us in a way of faith that allows him to be revealed, accomplish his purposes and plans, because that's the bottom line. He has a plan for each one of us. 
He has a purpose for you to fulfill. His complete work isn't going to get accomplished until you do it specifically. Until you do it specifically. We got to all do our part because your success is my success. And my success is your success. It all benefits each other. And we can make the investment of our time or our money or our, our labors, whatever it is, and know that there is a, a, a deposit and withdrawal system with God. When we need him, he shows up. He's the God who supplies all our need. And I could go on just with that forever, but let's close. When we lost our way, there's four things we must regain. The fear of the Lord, the ability to learn and be taught, be teachable. Learn how to dwell with the Lord in his prosperity and blessing for the benefit of all to come after us from generation to generation. Your success is everybody's success. And to become one who can, God can tell his secrets to because he wants to show you his covenant agreement with you. It's forever the same. If anybody's going to change, it's not going to be God. He's going to stay the same. And for, it's been settled where he's at and where you're at. He called you before you are born, put within you every ability like a seed that has all the capabilities to be full and, and to be prosperous and fruitful and provide and have all that's needed. He put that within you before you are born. And he's going to coach you and keep you on track. No matter if you, you're going around a bank, it's still upward. He can get you there. He can get you back on track. So that's the word. Luke 10 says, Luke 10 too, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers few. Therefore pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. We're about to go into some, And you can all be a part of it. Where you work, where you live, where you play. You don't have to be a missionary. We, we, we are missionaries. Amen. Why don't you all stand with me? Thank you, Jesus. If anybody is looking for direction, if anybody is looking for uh, confirmation, or looking for somebody to come into agreement with where you're at because you have a need, I want prayer for that, and we have people who can pray with you, and if you just want your neighbor to pray with you, that's great. But don't leave here if you have a request, and you need somebody to come alongside of you, okay? Father God, I pray, Father, that you would complete what you've begun. There's a seed that's been sown, Father God, and there is a, a, a preparation that is being staged for us right now in the Spirit. I pray, Father God, for the benefit of all, that we would be willing and able because of you in our lives, Father God, and that you will uh, reveal the covenant of your relationship with us by fulfilling our destiny that has been long decided. Father God, I pray right now for each one to rise up to their own destiny, and Father, that you would fulfill your plans and purposes in each of us, because our success is another one success. Father God, bless us, fill us, anoint us, give us, be for us. Let our, we have it all because of what you did, Lord Jesus. You've done it all, and we get it all. And now let us give it. Father God, I thank you for the investment, Father God, you've made in us, and you're requiring a, a, a withdrawal. I pray that we be willing and able and teachable. Father, bless us and send us out, Father God, to be uh, a blessing to many today and this week and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen.